Japan is truly a wonderful country that has provided us globally with so many things over the years. I could go on and on about all the things that they have created, but two of their biggest industries are technology, whether it be software or hardware, and vehicles. The PlayStation is globally known by everyone and their grandma nowadays, and it's given so many people so many nice memories over the years. For us car enthusiasts who had a PlayStation, there was a plethora of games that we loved and play even to this day, one of the biggest of which being Gran Turismo. It's so popular nowadays on its 7th installment, or 8th since Sport exists, that they have partnered with so many companies and now even made a movie, which I have not yet seen and I want to see eventually. Polyphony Digital, being a Japanese company, knew the ins and outs of tuner culture in Japan and the general car scene, and that's why for so many of the Gran Turismo games, they have included some of the most unique cars not found in any other games. And there was this one specific car that was so good that by so many it was considered a cheat. A car that made anyone who wasn't using it angry at how good it was in every regard, whether it be top speed, acceleration, handling, braking, you name it. Today, we'll be venturing into the history of the Japanese tuner company Tomikaira and their infuriatingly good and sadly forgotten prototype that we all wish had made it into production. Our story starts in the Minami ward of Kyoto in the early 80s. Yoshikazu Tomita, I hope I'm pronouncing all those names right, was the owner of a humble European car distributor dealership named Tomita Auto. One fateful day, an established engineer and designer named Kiku Okaira ended up walking into the Tomita Auto and a long-lasting strong friendship between the two was suddenly sparked to life. They had talks about tuning some of the Mercedes vehicles coming into the dealership and maybe even becoming an official tuner such as the likes of AMG. That's when they created Tomikaira, their joint venture into tuning, and in 1987 they presented their first tuned vehicle. The Tomikaira M19, which was based on the Mercedes W201 platform. As 1988 rolled around, it made more financial sense for them to step away from European tuning and signed two successful contracts to only exclusively tune and sell Japanese domestic manufacturers Nissan and Subaru cars. In the following decade, the 90s, being infamous for Japan, specifically known to them as the lost decade, they tuned a large number of cars, including the R32, R33 and even R34 Skylines, Nissan 300ZXs, Subaru Imprezas, Legacies and the list goes on. They became known in the tuner scene and profited by selling high quality tuning parts to enthusiasts as well as their beautifully modified vehicles themselves. This success led to them to invest some of their capital in developing their own car from the ground up with their own philosophy. The result of such efforts was conceptualized as the Tomikaira ZZ, a lotus-like, lightweight little roadster that packs a punch under the hood. It had a 5-speed manual paired to a 2-liter SR20DE Nissan engine, making a little under 200 horsepower, and of course to the rear wheels. It also had a detachable roof for even more weight reduction. The ZZ was produced starting in 1996 in a factory in Hingham, England, but due to a sudden change to Japanese front impact regulations, Regulations, the factory could not produce the vehicle anymore after four years and without external sources of income it collapsed, leaving the ZZ as a very rare automobile as they only managed to produce only 220 units before collapsing in the year 2000. Eventually, in 2002, the car was revitalized as a leading edge 190 RT by Breckland Technologies. Following the relative success that the ZZ had, the company ventured into creating a newer, better and faster prototype. As always, under the brilliant engineering and guidance of Kaira, Tommy Kaira unveiled the ZZ2 in 2001.
The ZZ2 was designed by Noriyuki Nishida, and it's arguably one of the most beautiful JDM cars at least I've ever seen. It was originally designed as a more serious rear-wheel drive, rough 600 horsepower race car for the road, as seen in the game Gran Turismo 2, where the early prototype of the car is presented. However, a more modest approach was chosen, and after its unveiling in 2002, the company promised to sell the vehicle in high numbers. The ZZ2 was sporting a twin turbocharged infamous RB26 DETT, producing 542 horsepower at all wheels, making it essentially a lightweight mid engined skyline, which definitely is a fiery combination of words. This so called modest approach is what was included in GT3 and the following Gran Turismo games, being praised by the community as one of the best all around cars in the game, especially in its in game price range. Sadly, Tommy Kyra failed to put the car in production and sold the rights to it to Autobox 7, who renamed their own car part manufacturing division Autobox Sports Cars Laboratory. Autobox 7 is a parts manufacturer and reseller. Following the acquisition, Autobox rebatched the ZZ2 as the ASL RS01, though it never left the prototype state. In the following years, ASL would, with Kyra's lead, design and create the ASL Karaya. It's named after a thief from the Ming dynasty who gave his stolen goods to people in need, Robin Hood style. Odd name choice for a car, but maybe it's trying to indicate that it's giving the power and handling of expensive cars to a wider audience. Anyway, the car was styled by Noriyuki Nishida again, utilizing wonderfully the Alfa Romeo's 147 taillights. Autobuck announced that there would be 100 vehicles made, each having unique suspension dynamics and driving characteristics that would be set by the buyer. Only a few examples were built and the car was never in production. It would have been powered by an SR20 VE, an inline 4 by Nissan, made it to a 6-speed manual transmission. It would also have scissor doors and this time it would be an aluminium body, unlike the ZZ2. Today, Tommy Kara is selling JDM Performance Parts internationally through JDM Parts Ninja exclusively and also domestically in Japan. They have an international members club, one can join for $88 yearly. There are talks about Tommy Kyra looking for sponsors in order to finally put the legendary original ZZ2 into actual production. If that ever happens, this car will be legendary. With its Nissan derived all wheel drive system and with the incredibly powerful and reliable power plant it will have, it can outshadow a lot of cars of its potential price budget and hopefully they market this car this time instead of just including it in GT games. I want to give a special shout out to Toby Thayer for his awesome article he did recently in February of 2024 with Tommy Kyra themselves, link below in the description. Thank you for watching my video on the Tommy Kyra ZZ2, I appreciate all your support. I love making these videos, even if I went on a month long hiatus. I've got more videos planned, but you should definitely watch my previous obscure car story videos, especially this one as it means a lot to me. Thanks again for sticking around to the end.